In this video, I would like to give you some tips to solve relative motion problems. So the first thing that I would do when dealing with these kind of problems is to identify O, S prime, and S. Remember that there will be always three objects in your problem, in your relative velocity problem. The object that plays the role of O is going to be the object whose velocity is measured with respect to two other objects. The object that is going to play the role of S prime is the system of reference whose velocity is given with respect to another object or system of reference. And finally, S is going to be the system of reference whose velocity is not given. We don't care about the velocity of this object with respect to anything else. And uh, sometimes this is the object that is not explicitly mentioned in the problem. If it is not explicitly mentioned, it's probably the ground. So for example, in a problem where you have say two cars in the highway going at different speeds. Car A is going at 40 miles per hour, car B is going at 80 miles per hour, and perhaps the question is what's the velocity of car A with respect to car B? So in this problem it seems like there's only two objects. So you could uh, figure out which one's O, which one's going to play the role of S prime, but it doesn't seem like there's a third object that you would consider S well, that third object is clearly the ground. The velocity of those cars, A and B, when they say 40 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour, that velocity is always measured with respect to something. That something is the ground. When you talk about the speed of a car, you mean, most of the time, the velocity of the car with respect to the ground. So the ground is, most of the time, going to be the system S in your problem. Not always, but very often. Second step would be to draw the vector's velocity. The velocity of O with respect to S, velocity of O with respect to S prime, and velocity of S prime with respect to S. Whatever the directions they might have, you need to draw that and make sure that you know exactly in which direction those vectors are pointing. Once you've done this step, step B, then you need to arrange those vectors according to the Galilean transformation of velocity they will form, those three vectors will form a triangle. It is not any triangle. You cannot arrange them in any order that you want in a triangle. They need to follow a specific order. If you start with V O S prime, then to that vector you need to add, that means to draw uh, the tail with the head of V O S prime, you need to draw V S prime S to add to V O S prime V S prime S. So you draw V S prime S like that and the resulting vector that goes from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one that's the vector that is going to be V O S. Step D is to solve for the unknowns. It might be the magnitude of one of those velocities, it might be the direction of one of those uh, vectors, or anything else. So let's uh, let me show you an example so we can uh, apply these uh, problem solving tips. Let's say that you have a student on a flat car of a train and the train is moving to the right at 2 meters per second. The student then kicks a ball at 45 degrees from the horizontal and there is a friend standing on the ground seeing the train moving that sees the ball go straight up. The question in this problem is then how high does the ball go? The first thing to do in solving any physics problem is to do a sketch, a clear sketch of the situation. So here we have the student on the flat car kicking the ball at an angle from the horizontal of 45 degrees. The train is moving to the right at 2 meters per second and the observer on the ground sees the ball moving straight up and reaching a maximum height h max. Second step for any physics problem is to categorize the problem. What kind of problem am I dealing with? So this is a problem that involves the motion of an object, the ball, so it is a kinematics problem. But on top of that, we the problem is talking about the velocity of the ball with respect to different systems of reference, with respect to the person on the train, with respect to the person on the ground. So this is a relative motion problem also. 
The third step is to make a list of all the physical quantities in your problem. So here we have several velocities. First one would be the velocity of the train with respect to the ground, which was given as 2 meters per second, and the direction is 0 degrees from the positive x-axis. Another velocity is the velocity of the ball with respect to the train. That has a magnitude that we don't know, unknown, but the direction is 135 degrees from the positive x-axis. It makes a 45 degree angle from the horizontal. Now at this point uh, you should have realized that the ball must have kicked, even though the problem doesn't say it, specify it, the ball must have been kicked towards the back of the train, not towards the front of the train. If it had been kicked towards the front of the train, the situation would be similar to the animation that I show you with the person throwing a ball forwards and the observer on the ground will measure a horizontal velocity of the ball that is greater than the velocity of the ball with respect to the person on the train. So it would not be possible for that observer to see the ball going straight up if the ball had been kicked towards the front of the train. So this is a piece of information that is not given in the problem but you have to uh, figure it out on your own. Another velocity is the velocity of the ball with respect to ground. This is a critical variable because uh, once we have that value we're going to be able to find the height that the ball reached. The problem tells us doesn't tell us how much is that velocity but it does tell us that the direction of that vector should be 90 degrees uh, from the positive x-axis. We do know that. And the final quantity that we're looking for is the maximum height reached by the ball. This would be the calculation, the final calculation that will follow after we have found how much is the velocity of the ball with respect to the ground. The fourth step in solving any physics problem will be to remind yourself of the equations or tools that you have at your disposal to solve the problem. According to how you categorize the problem, we said that it was a kinematics problem, so you have three equations that you can use to solve kinematics problems. If there is two components, then three for the x, three for the y, and the problem will also categorize it as a relative motion problem, which means that we should be aware of the Galilean transformation of velocity equation. The fifth step is obviously to solve the problem using all the equations and tools that you have at your disposal. So since this is a relative motion problem mostly, we should follow a three-step, four-step strategy, which is first to identify O, S prime and S as discussed before. Second step is to draw those vectors. The third step is to arrange those vectors according to the Galilean transformation of velocity equation. The final step is to solve for any unknowns. So let's start with the first step. Identify O as an S prime. O is the object whose velocity is measured with respect to two different systems of reference. In the problem at hand, that role is played by the ball. The problem talks about the velocity of the ball with respect to the train and with respect to the observer on the ground. So that must be the ball. The second uh, system to identify is S prime. S prime must be the train, since this is the system of reference whose velocity is given with respect to another system of reference, which would be the ground. And S is clearly the system of reference defined by the friend on the ground. Second step is to draw all the vectors in your problem. So VOS prime, VOS, and VS prime S. VOS is the velocity of the ball with respect to the train. That velocity of the ball, the problem says that it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis. So that is the direction of VOS prime. We don't know the magnitude, but we do know the direction. Vector VOS, that's the velocity of the ball with respect to the ground. Problem says the ball is seen by the observer on the ground as going straight up. 
We do not, do, do not know the magnitude of that velocity, but we know its direction, 90 degrees from the positive x-axis. Finally, the velocity of the train with respect to the ground. That velocity is given in the problem, and it is 2 meters per second to the right. After we have a clear idea of in what direction the vectors are pointing, we can arrange them according to Galilean transformation of velocity. So let's do that. The first vector is VOS prime. That's the direction in which it points. We add to that vector the vector VS prime S. According to how we identify the systems, that would be the horizontal vector, magnitude 2 meters per second. And the resulting vector, the vector that goes from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one is the, vo the vector VOS which should be straight up according to the information in the problem so we need to make sure that those vectors that the resulting of the two vectors VOS prime and VS prime S is a vector that points straight up no X component for that vector Last step is to solve this problem with this information. So let me redraw that uh, vector diagram with VOS prime, VS prime, and VOS pointing straight up along the y axis. The magnitude of VS prime s is 2 meters per second. Can we figure out the magnitude of VOS? This is the, that velocity is going to tell us, is going to be related directly to the height of the ball. We do know that those two vectors, one is horizontal, the other one's vertical, they make an angle of 90 degrees. We know that the magnitude of Vs prime s is 2 meters per second. So how much is the magnitude of the other side of that right angle triangle? Well, this right angle triangle has an angle of 45 degrees. So since the angle is 45 degrees, then the opposite side is Vs prime s, which is 2 meters per second and to make a 45 degree angle the adjacent side to that angle must be the same magnitude so that tells us immediately that the magnitude of VOS must be 2 meters per second so we figure out that the magnitude of VOS which is the velocity of the ball with respect to the ground is 2 meters per second So in the so the situation that we have with the ball going at an angle for observer on the train going straight up for the observer on the ground we have figured out that for the observer on the ground the ball is moving straight up with an initial velocity of 2 meters per second how high does the ball go this is a one dimensional kinematics question which uh, I believe you can solve so please compute that height and uh, type it in in our space.